Right. Right, so modifier in the middle, tougher enemies. So enemies are going to be a bit stronger to go and take down. As soon as you get in towards Nidus, switch out to your operator, use Energize and Dash. And what you want to go and do is stand in front of this door. Um, Necros will also be standing in front of the door as well. That's where Necros should go and put his Warframe. And you want this door to remain open at all times. What's going to happen here is that Nidus is going to press his 2, pull enemies in, because enemies can spawn in here, but because the door's open, you're going to be pulling enemies in from all different directions, from over here, from the left, from the right, and from here. When you pull the enemies in, they will go ahead and drop into the dome, uh, the strangle dome from Korra. So Nidus' job is to pull enemies in. That's basically it. However, in the, in the downtime, Nidus can also cast and shoot at the same time, as you can see there. Um, so he will be one of the main shooters to go ahead and break down uh, enemies as well. The flashbang is a little frustrating to go ahead and deal with, especially at night time when uh, <laughs> it hurts your eyes. Let's go and pull these guys in. So all you want to really be doing is keep spamming too, keep yourself high efficiency, every so often dash back out and keep uh, energy coming back in. Wow, we're getting twice of these now. Crazy. And then just use your uh, use your weapon of choice to keep killing enemies. I see Endo is popping like crazy right now. So I like to go ahead and stand either on here or on there when I'm on Nidus. When you hit 24 accused on the left hand side underneath the mini map, uh, make sure you start to go and catch your Endo even slightly before that as well, because at this point, once you hit 25, you killed all of the enemies in the arena. Okay. That's that's all there really is towards the Nidus roll. Um, and I'll go ahead and show you the Nidus build. And then we'll go ahead and show you the Korra roll um, after the Nidus roll. And show you what it is that she's taken and the way that that's done as well. Um, if I can go ahead and access my progress and rewards. Click up here. So we got 1,230 endo. I have to flip my screen really quick to do this. But 1,230 endo. Um, and that took us 1 minute 40 seconds. So this is going to flux an awful lot. Um, it just depends on how lucky we are with the drops. Um, as for the Nidus builds, this is pretty much how it's looking. Uh, focus on uh, a lot of range. I don't think you need any higher than this. Max range is 280. Currently, it's 280. Uh, and then efficiency. You, you don't really want high duration either. The idea is that you just want to pull them in and then make them drop in towards the dome. Uh, as for Nidus as well, I do run uh, health conversion, uh, which is really good whenever I pick up energy orbs. Um, energy orbs, health orbs, you can go ahead and get your armor to stack, and this is flat armor, so 450, increase in three times, uh, a good amount of flat armor to go and have for survivability, since he doesn't have any shields or anything, and just vitality, uh, and then outside of that, it's just efficiency range, I do also do vigilante pursuit, um, not only does this allow me to get uh, a set from vigilante uh, armament, which is on my cone, um, this also allows me to go and see enemies around the map, so I know where to pull them in from and so forth. Uh, as for the Arcanes, I'm currently using Arcane Tempo. You will read here, on critical hit, I get 60% fire rate for shotguns for 8 seconds. So this is how I'm shooting really, really fast uh, with um, Nidus. Uh, quickly flash up of the uh, comb that I'm using here as well, 100% status. Um, you don't. This isn't required. Again, you can use a slash fire rate build. You can use viral in here as well. Um, Pause this if you guys ever want to go and pause it and just you know, read through the builds if you guys want to. The ribbon that I've got on here, you really want multi-shot status chance fire rate or damage. Anything else like that is going to be really, really good. If you do happen to have over 60% status chance, um, you can get 100% status on this. Um, but if you have 120% status chance... Um, you can actually drop a 60-60 mod out, which is why you see I've got Shotgun Savvy in here. You wouldn't normally run this, but I don't need extra elementals. As for the ele elementals, Gas bypasses the shields. We use four times corrosive projections to remove their armor, so we need to go and bypass the shields and hit the shields. Gas bypasses the shields and attacks their health directly, and Cold attacks the shields uh, directly as well. So we're bypassing and attacking, so Gas and Cold are going to be really good to go ahead and take out the shields, so these are the better elements. Outside of that, you can have one person running viral as well, so between all of you, you should be able to go ahead and just take down their health um, and their elementals uh, uh, and their resistances at the same time. Okay, so next one we're going to go and work on will be Korra. I'll go ahead and flash the build up here, and then I'm going to go ahead and just look at Korra inside the game to show you what it is that she's doing. So we've got the Vorjani build over here. Let me go and back out so you can see all these numbers without it being a 
affected by reds and greens. Uh, so duration, efficiency, and a little bit of range. Now you don't need a tremendous amount of range when it comes towards Cora. Um, reason being is because the dome will get too big. And if the dome's too big, it means that we've got to look all over the place to keep shooting. We want to try and keep the dome nice and small so when the enemies get pulled in by the lava, um, they will then drop into the dome. Now, once they're dropped into the dome, can Nidus pick them out with his lava? No. Um, they're prioritized held by the dome, uh, sorry, prioritized held and pulled in by the lava, and then when the lava stops, they're then prioritized held by the dome, okay, until death at this point. So the dome will always uh, prioritizely uh, hold them. Um, Pilfer and Strangle Dome is what's going to allow us to get 65% chance of dropping additional loot. So this is one of the most core things going to run on there. Outside of that, a little bit of survivability. Vigilante Pursuit is also, again, going to go and help out with my uh, armaments combo and give me a bit more critical hits from it. Fenery's Bodyguard is actually really good. You will be Fenery with you. Um, you don't really need her to do any damage. You can just set her on heal to keep her healing people or just set her and protect. You don't really need her on attack, but even if she does, she's not going to really overly kill anything. Um, but this is really good because she will die in your place in case you happen to die. Um, as for um, Korra, I actually run Energizing Guardian. When I when I play Korra, um, I prefer to have the extra energy come through and I prefer to have the extra defense. Um, again, you can run Arcane Tempos. That's completely acceptable. And again, Corrosive Rejection is just the standard here. So this is what we'll be doing on Korra. Again, my choice of weapon will still be uh, Comb. There's plenty of other weapons to go ahead and take here. Uh, we'll go ahead and get to those examples a bit later. But for now, that's a Daro. For now, we'll go ahead and sit here with uh, the Comb because the Comb is pretty much one of the best weapons to run into this. So we'll just force ourselves straight towards uh, for Jedi. And I'm going to go ahead and have a little look at Korra, and you'll see the positioning of her. Um, Korra is mostly just focused up pure, purely upon the Strangle Dome. Uh, the entire setup is Nidus, oh, the modifiers tougher enemies here as well, so they will be a little bit stronger, but that's fine. I just realized <laughs> I'm on Korra myself, aren't I? <laughs> that's right, minor, minor mistake. Minor mistake. No, no, that's okay. It's me who didn't swap. Um, let me just go ahead and grab Nidus real quick. There you go. And I'll just go and put me on Vorgenai. Okay, and let's get back into it. Sorry about that, guys. Bit of delay there. Okay. Right, yeah, so breaking down the Korra roll. Um, Korra starts in the same way that Nida starts. Um, when you... When you when you spawn into the map, instantly switch out into your operator and use Energize and Dash. You really want to go and get that energy straight off the beginning. Now, if you're host, you should really just do it for the both of you. So in this case, if you're Nidus or your Korra, allow the host to uh, instantly dash and just walk through it to go ahead and get the energy. So Korra's going to position herself again somewhere relatively near the door, as you can see here. Uh, and then she's going to go and put the Strangle Dome down. Now, the main thing to go ahead and focus out with Korra is some of the modifiers that come through on Vorgeno are going to be modifiers like... On the wiki, it says minus 25% ability duration, which means that that, that that means your Strangle Dome is going to go down a lot quicker. So please pay attention to the timing of your Strangle Dome. And keep in mind, you can actually go and put two Strangle Domes down. Um, try and keep them in one position, though, but just before this one's about to end, Pay attention to your timer and cast another one, okay? That's basically all you want to go ahead and do there. And uh, just like everyone else uh, sitting around, you can go ahead and help out with some killing if you want to. Uh, and the reason why we're being... Oh, I died there. But the reason why we're being clothed up is uh, because we got a Necros on Unaru um, using Void Shadow, uh, which will help us out. I'm actually surprised I died there, but sometimes that can happen, so don't worry. But I'm back nice and quick, so we can keep on top of it. So you see Korra is just over here. Every so often she'll go ahead and uh, put a Strangle Dome down. And that's mostly it. Just wait for the enemies to fall into the Strangle Dome and then kill them, okay? Remember, enemies held by Strangle Dome will give you the 65%. So right now, no one shoots. As soon as they drop, now we start shooting. And uh, Victory's here. Just run around, pick up all of your Endo. There we go. Let's go and see how much Endo we got on that run as well. Uh, so that run currently took us 1 minute 35 seconds, and we got 1,660 end there. Again, this can flex. I think the most that we got was 1 minute 57 seconds in time, but we got 2,200 endo. So almost, that's almost 1,000 endo every minute, um, which again is a is huge, huge way of farming endo through there. So again, for Korra, Pelfrin Strangle Dome, 
a, a lot of duration, max efficiency, little bit of range, uh, protection, and then Zenuric, that's going to be there for Korra. Now we're going to go to bring it in towards Necros and the Necros role and what it is that he's going to be doing as well. So first thing to go ahead and break down is, of course, he's going to go and bring uh, Corrosive Projection. That's just core on him, okay? Now, it depends on which Necros you're going to go in and be here. So we want two Necroses with the groups. As we go hover over here, we got one. Uh, sorry, I'm a Necros now, but I would be Nidus. Uh, then we got Necros, another Necros, and then a Korra. Okay, all of us on Corrosive Projections, as you can see there. Um, now, there's two typical roles here for Necros. You've got one Necros who's going to be one of the main shooters, and you've got another Necros who's going to be the main defender. And we'll break both of those down. They can pretty much run the same build. It's just that this, the second Necros um, is going to be mostly inside their operator all of the time. And uh, we'll explain how that kind of uh, works down when I get to it. So Corrosive Projection, Vigilante Pursuit, again, really good for helping us see the enemies and also allowing us to get extra critical hits. I run Arcane Tempo on my Necros. Uh, I got a lot of survivability, as you can see here. Necros doesn't really need many things for his build. Um, 175 Efficiency, Despoil. Now, Despoil is really good here. Um, Despoil, instead of you consuming energy, whenever an enemy dies, you're now consuming health. But because an enemy dies, there's a there's a chance of you even getting a health orb. So, how do I break this down? Whenever a corpse is on the ground, Necros will consume that corpse. Now, this doesn't just mean an entire body. This also means limbs and legs and so forth. He'll consume a corpse. When he consumes a corpse, he now flips a coin. Uh, what's going there in my mouth? Yeah, he now uh, flips a coin. So there's a 54% chance of him getting heads. Imagine just like flipping, it's like, oh, I got heads. If he gets heads, he can consume, uh, obviously he has consumed the corpse, but he will consume that corpse into extra loot. If he gets tails, he's consumed the corpse and nothing else has happened. So only one Necros can go ahead and consume a corpse. This is why, as well, like I said, when he's in the middle of consuming it, can he consume another corpse at the same time? No, because there's... A, there's a, there's a tiny little action that he's essentially consuming one corpse. This is why we want two Necroses. So when one en one enemy dies, and let's say he's split in half, one Necros could consume the top part of him, the other Necros can consume the bottom part of him. And then they're both flipping coins, 54% chance. Did they get extra loot on the top half of the corpse? No, that's okay. But did he get 54 did he get a 54% chance and flip the coin and get heads on the bottom half? Yeah, he did. Okay, so then you got an extra drop when it comes down towards it so hopefully you understand that like necros will always go ahead and consume a corpse this is why you don't want to kill too fast but you don't want to kill too slow because otherwise then you're just kind of slowing yourself down on it um, an awful lot of survivability i run extra health in here i run extra armor flat armor and then uh, even more flat armor here by picking up the health orbs the spoil like i said is gonna be really really good we don't really Especially in the arena, you start off with no energy. We don't need more and more people on Zenyrek at this point. And once we toggle it on, we're not getting energy back unless we were using things like Rage or you get the idea. Or we had like a... No, I'm actually going to say have Trini with us, but that doesn't work like that. Um, so we're actually just using Despoil here to convert our health instead. So extra health on top of you will help out towards this. And in survivability, Arcane Tempos are fine. You can use Pulse, you can use Grace... Um, you can use Pulse, actually isn't too bad. You can use Pulse, you can use Grace, you can use Tempos, Guardians, whatever you want to. Um, these will also go and work out well. Now, you only need a little bit of range because we hover over Desecrate here. It says it's got 28 meters, um, which is this third one right about there. You read across it, 28 meters. Now, 28 meters, you can see where the dome is when enemies drop into it. It's not too far, so we don't really need that far in terms of range. Just a cutting drift. I had nothing else to put in there, so I just put a cutting drift in there. Doesn't need duration. Efficiency, range, doesn't need strength, and you should be nice and crispy to go. Okay, so one Necros can go ahead and bring uh, Madurai. So uh, when we go ahead and take Madurai here, we take Phoenix Talons, we take Phoenix Spirits. So we increase physical damage, and we also go increase elemental damage. So this could be really good for our primary, our secondary, our melee, whatever we're using to go ahead and slash up those enemies. Um, the second Necros is going to be taking Unaru. So when Necros, when you spawn in with Necros, you're going to press free. He's going to do this, turn on his Desecrate. He's just going to sweep across like that. He'll turn on his Desecrate. Um, the second person who's running Unaru, if you switch from your, if you switch from your uh, Warframe to your Operator, 
um, your necros is, uh, your necros will still be desecrating. You don't have to be in your warframe for necros to desecrate. It can still happen when you're outside on in your operator. So what happens here is you you saw on the the Nidus and the Korra run there. Uh, we want this door to stay open. What necros will do the, the necros with Unaru is he'll put his warframe in front of the door and then he'll move away from the door and then he'll keep tapping. Unaru. He doesn't have to hold it. Just a couple of tap, like tap, hold for like a second, let go. Tap, hold for a second, let go. Tap, hold. The reason for this is because there's a bit of an issue with coding. I mean, Warframe's notorious for this, but that's okay. There's a bit of an issue with coding here. Enemies can still detect us sometimes when we are cloaked. So we're constantly refreshing the cloak to allow us for a better chance of survivability. So we're going to use something here called Void Shadow. Void Shadow now renders allies within 25 meters invisible. So this ability costs an extra 4 energy per second per ally cloaked. So this is going to be really, really good for us to allow our entire team warframes and operators to remain invisible so enemies are like wait who's killing us i've got no idea next thing you know bish bash wash they're all dead all right so we'll go ahead and show you both of the uh, necrosses and the way that they're breaking it down if i can go back over towards the nidus right now <laughs> before i forget here we go yeah, we'll go back over towards Nidus now, and then we'll go ahead and uh, have a little look towards both of the Necrosses. You'll see one of the Necros is shooting with the Nidus. These are your two damage dealers, and then you've got another Necros off on the side in an operator cloaking to protect us. Korra's doing her strangle dome. Between everybody in the team doing their roles, we're increasing the chance of getting Endo. Okay, so Pilfering Strangle Dome and uh, Despoil right now are really helping us. We do also have a booster on right now called a uh, Mod Drop Chance Booster. Now, Endo is considered a mod. It's just coded as a mod. Um, it's not coded as a resource. So, DE recently have re released a new Mod Drop Chance Booster. Um, this is affecting Endo, which means we can get more Endo if one person in the team has it everybody in the team gets affected by it because there's a drop chance it's in the same way that if you have a drop chance booster within your unit uh, within your team one person has it everybody essentially has it from what i'm aware of so i'm gonna go and do a bit of shooting here and uh, we'll look at one of the necrosses let's go and look at the left hand side so here's uh, uh here's one of the necrosses as he's doing a lot of shooting right now you'll see he's also using the comb because he's just rinsing them down like that and you see the other necros is standing right there um, and he's not doing anything, but you can see there's a guy, an operator invisible, running around uh, along here. And every so often, he's just cloaking to keep us uh, alive so these enemies don't attack us. Um, and as you can see, because the Necros is in front of the door, even if I move away from the door, the door will always stay open because the Warframe is keeping the door open. And we need this door to be open because enemies can spawn in here. So we want to pull those enemies out. Uh, this is like one of the best cross sections in uh, Rafa Marina. So definitely get used to standing in front of the door and learn to position yourself uh, wherever you want to. I feel like Nidus kind of standing up on, on these uh, uh, obstacles here. Just these like... I don't know what these are, pipelines on this side. I feel like that kind of gives them a good position to kind of look down and uh, attack them from these angles. So um, that was 1 minute 34 seconds. That was 1,200 endo. Uh, so again, it, it's very situated as to, you know, are they dropping endo? Um, is the 54% chance of Necros's um, despoil, is that helping us? Um, is the Pilfering Strangle Dome with 65% chance, is that helping us? Um, and also, how much endo is being dropped? Now, certain enemies can drop like 20 endo, some enemies might be able to drop 40 endo. I can't quite remember the exact uh, endo uh, breakdown on them, but you can find it on the Wikipedia. It is listed down there. Uh, some of the more heavier units within uh, Rafa Marina will drop more and more endo. Um, so now we're going to have a little look at some of the other builds. Again, this is the comb that I was running. Um, so yeah, we will go and focus on things like gas, cold, so forth, so forth. Now, if an enemy dies towards slash, right, and if there's a slash proc on the enemy or the slash damage that killed the enemy, so forth, there is more percentage chance for the enemy to split. Now, um, depending on what weapon you're running, um, there's you can split them in half or you might be able to split, split them in quadruples. So it really kind of depends on what weapon it is that you're running. Now, shotguns are very, very good. Uh, another list of some other weapons to go ahead and run here would be things like... Uh, where are we? Boar Prime is also fine. It's another shotgun. Strun Wraith, Heck, and Tigress Prime. Uh, even Vague or Heck if you really want to. Uh, these weapons, all of these shotguns are very good for primaries to go to break it down. But the reason why we use the comb, big magazine size, um, the pellets that come out of it, it's a spool. So when you shoot the comb, it starts off with three pellets you shoot. 
bam, three pellets. Then it goes, bam, four pellets. Then it goes five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And from there onwards, it just keeps doing twelve. So this is how you rinse ammo very, very quickly on the comb. But with all of those pellets coming out, means there's even more chance to apply status towards them. Uh, the more status that we have on every pellet, 100%. Uh, affecting the pellets. Uh, this is a whole different formula. I have to explain this another day, but uh, with the with the 100% affecting all of the pellets before multi shot, um, it will allow us to split the enemy even more often. Now I've got 12 pellets hitting an enemy, and if slashes on all 12 of those pellets, the odds are that enemy's going to go ahead and get split open. So this is really good. Same kind of be affected with boar, shun wraith, heck, and tigress. They may not have 12 pellets. They might have four or six or whatever it might be, or even two. But the idea is that it's got the same uh, formula of splitting uh, within it. As for secondary weapons, if you don't want to go and use things like comb, you can use weapons like a. Uh, I'm going to butcher this. Akjagara Prime, uh, Comac. Piranha Prime. These are just some examples. I wouldn't really recommend secondary weapons. Again, the comb is incredibly superior. And just like how I stated in this build, you still uh, can run this build. Um, Cleanse Grenier is just a, an extra faction damage. I can't go ahead and rank it out anymore because I would have to go and formal this a bit more. But you can go ahead and run Banes in here as well. Oh no, do we have Banes? Oh no, it's just Cleanse, isn't it? I'm sorry, that was foolish of me. Um, yeah, we can go and run things like uh, damage to Grenier in here. This will get extra faction damage. Frail momentum, shotgun spazzes, uh, things go ahead and get extra fire rate. Flat damage going across here as well. You'll see I'm bumping up the slash to go ahead and help them out. And Fisher spreads uh, for a little bit of extra kind of more spread on it and so forth. Now, this is an awful lot of fire rate, but with that fire rate, with that DOT coming back from the slash, you will chunk them even with this build. So if you don't happen to have a Riven for 100% or 60%, 120% status chance, don't worry about it you can run more of a uh, uh what's the word i'm looking for i was gonna say like a poverty based build you can run more of like a, a build that caters towards slash and raw damage and fire rate and you'd still be able to contribute towards the team this is also fine uh, you can also use bows as well things like dread and so forth i do see that as for melee weapons adarax zors these things are completely fine to go ahead and use uh, as well um closing tips on uh Excuse me. Uh, closing tips uh, to, to wrap this up is uh, obviously wait for enemies to be pulled in by lava to drop and be held in towards the strangle dome. Always wait for that part. Once that happens, then shoot them. Uh, Nidus and uh, sorry, Nidus and Necros should be relatively the main shooters. Um, so always try and make sure your Nidus and your Necros have got a bit of better builds. Korra can also do it. And like I said, when you are with Korra, be careful of the uh, modifier that comes through that uh, ability duration and it hits you on it. Um, because the odds are your dome will go down very quick and a lot of cores get caught off guard with this which is completely acceptable so do always keep an eye on the duration of your uh, pilfer and strangle dome um and also keep in mind of the small cooldown uh, period in necrosis desecrate there's no need to kill too fast but you also don't want to kill too slow if you could do about a good time to go and look for is anything between like a minute 30 to a, roughly about a minute 50 um, a good amount of endo to go and get in there. It really depends on RNG within your favor at this point, but a minute 30 to a minute 50, try and aim for these times. These are good times to go ahead and uh, uh, keep going for rather than like two minutes or a minute 10 and so forth. Because um, the odds are if you're going too quick, like I said, he's not desecrating everything and you're going to get less endo. But if you're going too slow, well, then it's not really that efficient. So you got to kind of find the board. A minute 30 is like a good thing. Keep in mind, you can't run companions within this. Um, so it doesn't matter what kind of companion you have. No companions, no companion weapons. Venery is an exception. So keep that in mind. She will come in with you, um, but you can't run any companions. And the mud drop chance booster, Pilfer and Strangle Dome, Necros is Desecrate. All of those will affect the endo drop rate. Um, besides from that, the node that you guys are looking for is on Sedna. Um, and it is right up towards the top. It's called Vorjanoi. You may have to go ahead and do uh, Naki, Yam, and then Vorjanoi. As you continue doing these, you will go ahead and get more and more points um, in towards uh, Judgment, which will allow you to go and farm out Kayla the Thame. Um, be quiet. Um, which will allow you to go ahead and farm out Kayla the Thame. So as you can see here, I got 9,000 points myself, and I get 15 points every time I do this. So as you can see, I've got quite a fair bit of experience on this. So hopefully, this guide has helped you guys. If you do like it, Follow, I don't know, hit the like button. I'm going to cut that last bit out, but you get the idea. I'll fuck it up. <laughs>